Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about an Amazon FBA private label research technique to find you a product that's in your budget, whether you have $2,000 to start, $1,500 to start, or five, ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 to start, or maybe even beyond that, and this is a business you're interested in. I'm going to show you how to pick a product that you can actually afford to sell. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching. Be sure to stick around to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe if you happen to be new, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna move over into my computer um, and just pull up an example really quick. Just, this is just a floating shelf. I was actually looking at floating shelves for my bathroom. Um, and let's just see. So this one sells, I don't even know, probably a lot. It has a lot of reviews. Yeah, so three, um, 4,000 sales per month, right? So this brings me to a really good point that a lot of, uh, a big trap a lot of new sellers fall into is that they see this, they, they get persuaded by all these YouTubers and everyone's saying, oh, I make $40,000 per month, I make $80,000 per month, I only sell two products, they both do $30,000 a month. It's like, just, you have to get out of that frame of mind of making every single product this six figure per year product. Okay, because that's just unrealistic and it's really getting in your way of actually succeeding with this business model. What you really need to do is frame it in a way that you ask yourself, can I be profitable with this product? Can I sell five a day of these product, 10 a day of these product, four a day of these, this product? And can I sell that at a rate of 30% net margin? When you start getting down to these realistic numbers and maybe 150 to 300 sales per month, if that's in your budget to afford that amount of inventory, then start there, right? Because even if you get a really successful product and you don't have the money to keep that product in stock, you're gonna run into just as big issues as if you hadn't started selling that product. So let's get into it. The first thing that you have to do is figure out how much inventory you can actually afford. And to do that, I'll just show you with these price brackets here. So generally, an Amazon product like this product here, they're probably getting these products for maybe seven or eight dollars. Because what ends up happening is usually your cost of a product is gonna end up being about 25% of the listing price in that range. It could vary from if you have really good margin, maybe 15% of what you're paying is for the product, 20%, um, all the way up to maybe 30% of what you're paying for the product is the cost of the goods, which would be probably pretty bad. But in this situation, I was probably spot on right here. We could see that there's 560 estimated manufacturing cost and then $1.73 um, per unit. So right there around that seven or $8, like I said, for this product to be sourced, sent to the customer. And then on top of that, you're going to have fees. So knowing that if you only have, I'm going to teach you a simple mathematical, not, it's not really the equation, I guess it's the equation, but just kind of a formula that you can follow to figure out how much you can afford to spend on units and what kind of products you should be going after. Cause you might be looking at the wrong market. So here we go. If you have you know, say $1,500 to spend on inventory. Now, if you have $1,500 total, you shouldn't be spending all that on inventory because let's break down some realistic figures. I wanna be transparent here and let you know what it actually costs to start selling. For instance, my very first order, I spent just around there, about $1,500, was $1,345 or something. This is back in 2018. And it started selling really well and I didn't have enough money to even place my second order. Luckily, my girlfriend was humble like I was and was saving money from her part-time job and literally loaned me $1,300 to place another order of this inventory until I could get some money out of Amazon to fulfill my own inventory's cost. Um, so keeping that in mind, here's here's the transparency and the realism coming in. You, you need to have about enough money for maybe two or three orders of inventory, not just your first order. If you're just barely going to make your first order, you should probably either A, save up for a little longer at a normal part-time job or whatever your job is or however you're making money now, or you should think about selling a product that doesn't require as much inventory or doesn't sell as much inventory, which therefore wouldn't require as much. So think about this. If you have about $1,500 to start, you can afford to sell a product that sells maybe five units a day. So there would be selling maybe 150 units per month Okay, and that's realistic, 150 units per month. Well, 150 units of a $5 product is gonna be $750. Okay, so that's your first round of inventory's cost. 
but you'll most likely need to reorder that inventory before ever getting paid by Amazon. So realistically, we're already up to that $1,500 mark of just inventory alone. On top of that, you're gonna want probably four or $500 for listing optimization, either imagery, EBC content, or paying copywriters. Um, in addition to that, you're gonna wanna have several hundred dollars set aside for advertising your product to get it launched, right? So realistically, to order a product, and this is where people just aren't looking at it the right way, to order a product that sells even a five units a day, you're probably gonna need anywhere from $1,500 at the minimum if you're just covering your inventory, technically you could do it, um, but more like around 2,000, 2,200. You don't ever want to be really strapped for cash in this business model. It private label is a cash intensive business model. You need to have capital um, in order for this to work. So now that you kind of understand that equation, you can use that no matter what your budget is. So I did that with that $1,500 to $2,000 budget range, which a lot of you may have. But if you have $5,000, just take that same equation, right? So just think of the price of the product you can afford to sell because 25% of it on average, is going to be how much it costs to source that. And then if they're selling five to 10 a day, make sure you can keep that in stock for 60 days or so. So with all that being said, why don't we start looking for a product like what we've just discussed. We're gonna imply a budget of what we discussed earlier, that $2,000 range budget, affording a product that sells about five a day. And now, no matter what your budget is, even if it's 10,000, you could take the same principle and continue watching this video and learn how to pick something that's within your budget as well. Uh, because don't think that just because you have a higher budget, you can sell any product on Amazon. You still want to, you know, come up with this kind of cash flow formula for figuring out how much it's going to cost to sustain the inventory before you're getting payments from said inventory. So let's move into it. Let's just go into a few categories here. Um, do something like that. And then we're going to come over here. And this is one of the more important ones, the price of the product that you're going to be selling. If I'm around that $1,500 to $2,000 range, I probably want to be in the $20 to $30 price range. You could go even slightly less than that. Um, you could certainly find a product that's probably more than $16, so we'll just cut that down a little bit. Um, but that that you should be able to afford something in that range with that amount of money. It's, it's just a matter of how many are they selling per month. Well, if it's $20 and they're selling um, you know, a thousand per month, you probably won't be able to keep that in stock with. They're selling 150 per month, you'll be okay. Then we'll just come down to sales, minimum sales. Uh, I want to see that there's about probably, I'll go with uh, as low as 125, because again, remember, in this case, I might even go 90, uh, because three to five a day. So if we max the sales out at maybe we can only afford uh, max sales per month to be around 200. So that'll have us right in that 150 units sold per month range and that three to six units per day sold um, for this lower budget. Now, again, you with a higher budget, you'll know after doing what we did in the beginning that you're just adjust adjusting this for you. So if you can afford two months worth of inventory of something that sells 300 a month, then you might want to start with 250 here and go all the way up to 600 or 700 for your amount you could sell per month. Um, we're not going to uh, adjust revenue because if there's a price range between 16 and 30 and they're selling 19 to 200 per month, that revenue will be just fine. And then we're going to come up here into max reviews and I'm okay with seeing a little bit higher max reviews. Maybe I'll go like 185 um, just because if there's something fundamentally flawed with the listing, I've seen plenty of listings that have 185 reviews that have just one picture, minimal bullet points, no description, and they sell $5,000 in revenue a month. So it's definitely something that it's, it's, it used to be this whole big thing. Like when I started learning that you have to sell something that has low reviews, I don't necessarily believe that's true. Um, I've even said that in the past because I did think it was true until I dropped some of that conviction and really started testing uh, what actually works. Um, so now we can come down here and we could hit search. So I'm simply going to look through here for ideas that I like. And if you've seen anything, from me in the past few days, you'll know that really what you should be doing now is coming up with a list of maybe 20 or 30 ideas before you ever even go and try and analyze things. Um, just for the sake of this video, if we do find something that pops out to me, I might go and take a look at the market and see how it's doing. Um, but I, I 
ideally what you would be doing now is once you figured out what you can kind of afford, you'd keep looking and you just kind of look at products that pop out to you or interest you. And you would go and save those to your own personal list, or you can add them to your product tracker, uh, make a big list, maybe 40 or 50 ideas, get the idea finding part out of the way, and then move on to analyzation later. Um, so as we're looking through here, I'm really just looking for, um, okay, blank leather bracelets for crafts. They sell about three a day at $22. They have a 62,000 sales rank. Um, that's not too bad. It's not great, but it, it's relevant to what they're selling here. And again, only you're looking at this, you're probably going only 2000 in revenue, but these are the kind of things that you can afford to keep in stock with this budget. So it, you're just fooling yourself going and looking at these hundred thousand dollar per month markets. You're going to get crushed. Absolutely crushed. If you try and go after that with this kind of budget, or you're not going to be able to maintain rank. You're not going to be, you're going to be spending too much on ads. You're going to be bleeding yourself through marketing. Um, sell something you can afford to keep in stock and sell something that you can afford to order maybe two or three rounds of inventory of with no help. Uh, that's going to help you a lot. And then if something ends up selling better over time, great. If three years from now, this product is actually a 10 to $20,000 per month product. That's great because you'll probably have succeeded more in your business launching several products like this. But the whole point here is to take that initial two, $3,000 that you have sell something that generates maybe one, two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 per month in profit. Um, in this situation, maybe only a thousand to $1,500 per month in profit, but start compounding that, right? Keep earning money on your own. Keep doing this as a side hustle until that one to 3,000 builds per month into, and again, another little pile of $3,000. Then you could go to your next product. And then that compounds. Now you're launching twice as fast. And that's kind of the slower approach you have to take when you have a lower budget. So we'll come in here. Um, look through some of these, the cabinet handles. Okay, there's a lot of cabinet handles that I'm seeing that looks like kind of a popular product. They're small, they're easy to ship. Uh, let's go check out these leather bracelets. Because this product may be only doing, um, you know, three sales a day. But that's okay, if we could come in, we could do a better listing, we could listen to some of the customer reviews, we can improve it a little bit, maybe we could sell three to five a day. And that might be okay for our budget with this margin, right? They're, they're just selling leather with buttons on them for $22. So let's go ahead and let's do blank leather bracelets. It looks like their main search term. And I don't just want to look at this one listing. I want to look at pretty much everything. One thing you should do before that, just see how consistently this seller has been selling from the amount of time they've been selling. So they've been selling for almost two years, about um, 20 months, and they've only got 64 reviews. I think we can do a lot better than that. Um, they also have had a really hard time ever doing better than they have done in the last, uh, looks like three months here. It's really taking them a while. It's just an unoptimized sell. They probably just threw the thing up on Amazon with a bunch of variations and it's just taking them ever for forever for them to sell. They don't have a great listing. They don't have good copywriting. Um, so there's a lot we can improve about this. So that's really what you want to do. Did I put black? No, blank, blank leather bracelets. Maybe you have to put like four crafts. Was that a key part of it? I know this is not like an optimized search term, but I'm going to use this because it'll probably bring us to a much closer market. So we come in here and I, I mean, they're pretty much unparalleled. They have very little competition. So this might be an area where we can go, okay, if, if there's only four or five sellers selling this thing, they all sell maybe two, 3000, 4,000 in revenue per month. Uh, I think I can afford to make a better listing for this, put it up, and then I'll be actually selling a product that I can afford to sell. No, I'm not saying this is a perfect market. I don't, I'm not actually seeing too much, um, too many other sellers doing it. I usually like to see a few sellers doing it, not just one seller. One seller is okay, but if there's a few sellers doing it, we can see a commonality amongst what's working and what isn't, and then come to a conclusion about what we should do in said market. So ideally you would keep coming through here and we have tons of different results here. We have 684 pages, pages of results. Um, what, what I'll sometimes do is I'll, I'll come up here and I'll do like um, 15 reviews or so, and then I'll sort by reviews down here. If we come in here and do that, check this out. Sort by reviews, low to high. And we'll be looking at all those ones about 15 reviews. I like 15 because if you're in that like one to 10 review range, you might be doing giveaways, you might be just launching and the sales might be inflated. That 15, 20, 30 range minimum, we start to see, you know, maybe it's been a month since they launched, two months since they launched, what's actually happening. So we're just gonna look through here and already you can see there's a much better mix of products. It's not just like all wigs and bands and cabinet handles. As you sort a certain way, you might get different results. 
Um, and if you're seeing that, for instance, some of these revenues are a little too low compared to this, maybe maybe you have a bigger budget than this and you're going, oh, some of those aren't really uh, the kind of products I wanna sell. It's really easy. You could just come up here, you could adjust the price. Maybe you only wanna see a minimum of $20 products and you're okay with seeing uh, 110 sales per month if you can afford to do so. So we come in here and we'd readjust and that would just raise the average of how much everything is selling in there. If you weren't comfortable seeing some of those lower ones. Now we don't see any thousand, we see mostly three to 5,000 in revenue. And this is, I, I hope to bring some realism here to um, the Amazon FBA world because there's a lot of people talking about how to make $50,000 per month, but very few people talking about how to make $1,000 per month. And I think $50,000 per month for most people is hardly achievable and it's just this goal that's just this dream out in the distance. But when we say, hey, here's how to make $1,000 per month, utilizing the one to $2,000 you have right now, leveraging it into $12,000 per year, well, that doesn't sound super sexy or super cool or awesome and you're not gonna be buying a supercar with that, um, but it could get you out of what you're doing now and more focused on this and doing this full time. So let's come through here and let's just look for a couple more ideas. Um, so we have a bathroom vanity light, probably wouldn't want to do anything electric for our first product. Um, I hate how small the pictures have gotten. <laughs> um, okay, keep looking. What is that pots and pan organizer? Scrapbook refill page protectors, a hundred count. They are $25, they sell five a day, and they only have, they have 185 reviews, but that main picture does not look too appealing. Maybe we'll open that in a new tab and we'll go check that in a little bit. Um, but first I'd, I'd like to grab a couple good ideas first. Bill money detector. Okay, that doesn't seem too good. There's tons of different products in that market. Um, I wouldn't want something electronic that was unreliable or liability issues. We'll keep coming through here and we'll look, what are these? These are canvas wall art here into a field. Um, so anything that's art is kind of hard to sell. Hanging shelf, hang closet shelves, reviews. Oh, we have the reviews sorted the wrong way. That's why everything has 185, makes sense. We'll come back in here and now, now I'll start looking. Um, and like I said, it's, a, it's okay to see the ones that have 185. Solid brass doorstop. I actually like that. It looks cool. So they sell five a day, making 4,000 per month, almost a $30 product cost or price. Um, that's pretty good. I like that. Come through here. What is this? Stretch canvas art frames. Gotham black. Okay, we'll check that out too. Generally pretty simple products, but things that could use improvements. So not things that are so simple that there's nothing to do to them are things that I'm generally interested in. So we'll come through here. Maybe we'll open up a couple more. We'll, we'll do a little bit of a longer video today. I haven't done a kind of longer video. Some of you have been requesting uh, more in depth, more detailed, just getting a, a peek inside how I do stuff on a day-to-day -day basis here. I thought what better theme than how to pick a product that you can actually afford to sell because it's a big hurdle for a lot of people. Um, wall mounted decorative hanging shelf. We'll definitely open that. I love the hanging shelf market. There's so many different options you can do there. And in that market, every individual design is an opportunity. It's not just the market as a whole that you're looking at. Face steamer, don't wanna burn anyone. Um, some of those can malfunction, that's not good. Definitely don't want a product that's pointing hot steam at someone's face. Okay, a adjustable book stand. There's probably a lot of those just out of common sense. There's probably a lot of products. It's like a tablet accessory, so I probably wouldn't do that uh, based on what they had in there. I know it's called a book stand, but keep looking through here. And then we'll, if we once we get to the bottom of this blanket, we'll, we'll actually, <laughs> to the bottom of this blanket, um, the bottom of this page, we will actually go look at the ones we've already opened now. Wall mounted coat rack. Again, probably really competitive, probably a lot of coat racks. What is this? Plate hangers, I've never heard of that. They're selling 157 a month, doing 3,000 in revenue. I think that's something that we could probably afford to sell. Come in here, what is this? Desktop bookshelf, that's really cool. Selling 100 a month, 30 bucks, 3,000. Okay, now we're, now we're really moving. Let's look through here. Once we get to the bottom of this, like I said, we'll, we'll go check out the ones that we actually have set up. Come in here. Acrylic paint, no, definitely not. And once we get to the bottom of this, let's see. Definitely not anything trendy like face mask. 
anti-haze filter. Again, face mask accessories, no thank you. Great, so now we're actually done with this. And to be officially done with it, I actually like to just close it down and start analyzation. Now, if you had 20 ideas, I might do that. If you're still looking uh, in this case, you probably would want more than just you know six, seven ideas like we have here, but let's take a look. We have six because that one we already looked at. So this here, scrapbook refill page protectors. So I wanted to take a look at their, uh, I almost feel like that should be their main image. This is like a light lifestyle infographic. That's an infographic, not lifestyle, but yeah, the listing's pretty good. I, I thought it was gonna be bad because of how they had this first picture. It's so against TOS, it's not even funny. Um, these could definitely use a facelift. The bullet points here are not super detailed. Uh, they've been selling for 200 days. Their reviews have been completely organic. And here's something really cool to see. So they didn't even have a review for like the first three weeks they were selling. That probably means they just launched with sponsored ads, did it the normal way, and they were immediately selling well. Okay, so I mean, I know that's March of, is that last year? No, that's this year. Uh, wow, we're, we're pretty far along in this year. That always happens somehow. They went out of stock with no reviews. They got their first review actually while they were out of stock. They came back in stock immediately, started selling well again, went out of stock, FC transfer maybe, came back in stock, and you, I could just see this with the sales rank here. Every time that they have this product live, it's selling really well. Now they've gathered all these reviews over the course of this time. That just proves how well they were selling over that time. So what I would like to do is maybe specifically 12 by 12 scrapbook refill page protectors. 12 by 12 is important because that's what they're doing that's working so well. So if the, all the other ones are like 10 by five or something like that or a weird size. Um, wow, look at this, right? So maybe 12 by 12 is a weird search term to use, but what I'm seeing for the 12 by 12 results are a bunch of really poor quality looking listings. Just the main images are just so unattractive. Um, I mean, this is this is literally the Amazon's choice for this. 25 pieces, this is 100 count. And that is, this is just a horrible main main picture. I mean, look at their listing. This is the Amazon's choice for 12 by 12. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of 12 by 12 now that we've seen all the ones that are there. So very poor quality. We'll just go look at scrapbook refilled page protectors. And essentially looks the same. So why don't we run some numbers on this? Feeling jungly today using Jungle Scout product database, we'll use Jungle Scout extension. Reviews are all pretty high, but in any case where I see a lot of high reviews, I just ask myself if there was a better quality listing, would that really matter? And a lot of times the answer is no. Because in almost every market where there is high reviews, you can always find someone that will come in after the fact with a newer listing with lower reviews and they still do just fine because they've improved uh, either the functionality of the product or the way that product's being presented to the customers or being bundled in a new way. So I'm not too scared of the reviews. Like I said, if the competitors, here, here's the thing where reviews tend to matter. If the competitors are extremely high quality competitors, they have premium listings, they're clearly a fierce Amazon seller. Well, then that's a situation where you should probably avoid it. But when they have really poor quality listings, they have bad pictures, they have barely any bullet points, those are not fierce competitors. So in that sense, you might be able to compete against them. And now we could go through and look at all of these, but we are getting to quite a long point. And I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover in this video. So feel free to take any one of these ideas that we found and go follow them through. Um, and you could do some research on your own based on the information you learned here today. If, that, if there's anything you could take away from this video, it'd be pick a product that you can afford to sell um, and pick something that's uh, attainable, right? Can, can, you for, can you sell five units a day of this product, 10 units a day of this product if it's cheap? Um, if the answer to that is yes, and you know a clear path to improvement for that product, try and rank it and try and do it better than your competitors are doing it and you just might be able to succeed with a realistic $1,000, $2,000 a month profit product. So that's gonna do it for today's video here on the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end if you're here still, and I'll be seeing you here tomorrow for another video on the channel. Thanks so much, later.